Thank you so much, Mercedes. Our next speaker, Mary Lupian, is a community activist and city school teacher who lives in the Beechwood neighborhood. She recently ran for Rochester City Council at large seat. Mary is also an organizer with the group Mothers Out Front, whose mission is to activate mothers to fight against climate change. Joining Mary today is a group of kids who are organizing their own Trump protest. Please welcome Mary and her young activist friends. Actually, the kiddos are going to come up after I talk. But Hi, everybody. Um, so we are at a breaking point. And we did not get to this breaking point because of Trump. We have been on this path for a long time. The sentiments that got Trump, to, Trump elected, the fear, the racism, the sexism, the homophobia, the xenophobia, have existed since our country's founding and long before that. These divisions that have been sown among us are meant to keep us divided and distracted, to keep us from realizing that the real oppressor is and always has been those at the top who control the money, the power, and even who control us because of the marketing campaigns and keeping us always feeling like we are not enough, that we do not have enough. But we are the change that we seek. All of this division and distraction is to hide the truth. And the truth is, is that we are the ones who have the power. We just don't realize it. We have given our power away to politicians and leaders who do not represent our values, who do not represent us. Capitalism and our democracy work for those 1% who use the rest of us as worker bees in their system. But when we realize that we have the power, we can break that system because those systems cannot exist without us. But it requires a sacrifice on our part. And my question to you all is, what are we willing to give up? Are we willing to sacrifice our time, our money, our comfort? Are we willing to risk criticism by speaking out? Are we willing to open our eyes and to see the truth about our lifestyle and how it might be harming the earth, low-wage worker who create the products that we buy in this country and around the world? And sometimes that is the hardest thing to do. I first got involved in activism when I opened my eyes, well, they were open for me, to how our systems and our lifestyle in this country are contributing to poverty and destruction. And once I learned, I couldn't unlearn it. I felt I had to do something. I'm going to use a biblical quote, not that I'm Christian, but I think it's, it's powerful and meaningful. The Bible says 103 times, do not be afraid. In my own life, I have come to understand that when I act from fear and hate, things get unclear and difficult. But when I act from love and trust in God or the universe or whatever you call it, miracles happen, connections are made, and the path before me is made clear. So I tell you today, do not be afraid to take the risks and make the, the sacrifices for our common cause. Because we are at a crossroads in history where the urgency of every cause, from Black Lives Matter, to queer and trans rights, to women's rights, to climate, demand us to take action. And what we are doing today is important. There's something magical that happens when people gather together for a common cause. We all come with our little bits of energy, and like the loaves and the fishes, it is multiplied and we leave with more energy than we came with. But the trouble is what happens afterwards. The most important thing we can do is when we leave, carry this energy back into the community. We need to continue meeting because we gather strength and power from each other. And so groups like Indivi Indivisible and Action Together and Surge and Mothers Out Front and all these organizations, there's hundreds in Rochester. One of them will fit with your values and what you hold most dear. We need to vote. Yeah. Women especially. In Monroe County, women outvote men two to one. Yet, we still have a lot of work to do. And not to mention that 
what is it, two thirds of white women voted Trump, voted for Trump? We women have a lot to do. We need to run for office. We need to support others who run for office. It's a risky thing to do. And I'm, I'm an introvert. I'm shy. I'm nervous to be up here. But when the urgency demands it, I can overcome that fear. And some of you... Some of you may think, run for office? Not me. And women... There's been studies that study this. Women have to be suggested that they run for office eight times before they start to think about it. And for me, unlucky, it was only four times before someone said I should run before I thought about it. And I had the benefit of going through training programs through Working Families Party and Women Elect and now us, uh, Oh shoot, CWA. Uh, CWA has their own program. And it's important that we train women to run for office. And we, uh, we, we acknowledge that it's not just them. They can't do it by themselves. We have to support them. And I'm a mother of young kids, and I couldn't do it on my own. It was a supportive community that came behind me and helped me to do it. And we are that supportive community. So I had people that were helping cook me food so that my family could eat. I had people that were helping watch my children. And those are important things for us to do as a community to support women who are usually the heads of their households to run for office. <laughs> women are powerful. And when we stand up, we make change happen. But we are not alone in our fight as women. My favorite quote is from Frederick Douglass. We are one, our cause is one, and when we work together, we win. Yeah. Um, and, and we as white people, the, those of us who are white, we have trouble sometimes working together to really understand what it means to work in partnership with people from other experiences. And there are groups like Surge that can help us do that. And Surge is showing up for racial justice to understand how to be true partners in this fight. So thank you all for coming and uh, let's go. <laughs> thank you. Um, so I want to introduce some young folks who uh, started to come together because of a little girl named Zaya Soul Fox daughter of activist Carly Fox. Um, so if the little, the little ones want to come up, and any other children who want to come up here and have their voice heard, because their voice is the voice of the future. But Zaya got very upset about what was happening with Trump, and especially what he said about other countries uh, who, where, where people of color come from. And she called all of her mom's friends and invited them to bring their children for a kids-only meeting. And so they've been, they, they met once and they're going to continue to meet monthly to, to talk about how this is affecting them and what they can do about it. And uh, my daughter, Maya Lupian, has written a speech that she'll read supported by the people around her. So, <laughs> Maya, there, there. Come on. like tr Trump 
and if I die, take my place and do what you have to do. <laughs> Maya for president. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mary and Maya and all the other little activists. Um, our next speaker, Mary Ann Cernofsky, is a female veteran and family outreach manager at the Rochester Veterans Outreach Center. Mary Ann is a proud spouse of a 26-year Army veteran and has been working with the veterans for over 18 years. In the Army Creed, it states, I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. Marianne follows those words above and beyond. Veterans are near and dear to Marianne's heart. Please welcome Marianne here today. Thank you so much for letting me be here today. Thank you for everyone that's here and all these wonderful organizations. Way to go with the females. That's what I'm doing now. My new initiative is taking care of our female veterans. We've opened a Priscilla's house for our homeless female veterans and their children. Yeah. My background is working with, obviously you heard the veterans, but also working, I was a school teacher for 23 years, and also working with families of the military. It was a tough, tough role to start. But you know what? It has been dear and a passion to my heart. And people forget that families serve. And you know who takes care of the families and who takes care of our when our service centers are overseas? Our spouses and our children. Our children have to learn a hard life that they don't automatically get into. But all of a sudden their moms or their dads are away. Yes, I did say moms. Mo female veterans are now allowed to be in combat and that was a fight for over 20 years. Yeah. The females can do it and we will do it. And, and with that being said, the Veterans Outreach Center is a program that takes care of all of our veterans and I, like I said, I take the, the small part of the female veteran program. There's over 20% of females that are in the service now. And over that, you're talking over 11 to 12% and probably even higher now that are homeless. Why are our veterans homeless? They serve our country, they help us to get the freedom that they, we deserve, and yet we're finding them under bridges, we're finding them in, in couch surfing, we're finding them just living on the street. That's what I'm here for, is to recognize that our veterans need help. And it's not all veterans that come back from combat that come and have a lot of issues. But for the ones that do have issues, why is our community is phenomenal community, but why as a country are we not taking care of the situation? That should be number one. We're getting the freedom because of them. And that's why we are not doing that or taking care of it. And that is what the big fight is. And we are working all around the country and in Washington, big time, with taking care of our veterans and our families. I've also had an experience of working with our Gold Star families. For those that don't know, they're the family members that have lost a son, daughter, spouse, whomever. They paid the ultimate sacrifice. And you know those families are, once again, some of them are homeless. There's children that need the assistance, because I am big on families, as you see. And they need the assistance that they're supposed to be getting, but yet they're not. So that's what I'm here for, is to get the word out. Spread the word. Help us. Help our female veterans. And come see the Veterans Outreach Center to see what we actually do with our veterans and all of the supportive services that are given to them free of charge. Everything is free for our veterans to, to be taken care of. But the big point is please help us with, if you see a veteran on the street, you see the veterans under a bridge, come guide them. Tell them to come to Veterans Outreach Center. That is our big role. We take care of the homeless veterans, yeah. female or male. But like I said, we ha then we also have our transitional housing, which is also, right now we have 33 veterans living there because they're homeless. But they're taken care of, and we're taking care of them to make sure that they can move forward. The, I, the role is for us is to give them these supportive services so they can go back in and, and live on their own, live a civilian life. They've been in the service for so long, overseas for so long, that they come back not knowing what to do. I'll give you a very sad story of one of our, our veterans that I've worked with very, very closely. 
She came back from service. Uh, it was overseas. She did four tours. Her fourth tour, it just wasn't so great coming back. She came into the Veterans Outreach Center. I worked with her for many months. And with that being said, she went into a new apartment. And I know you'll all find this to be very difficult. She went into a new apartment because she's always had a gun on her side, overseas, living outdoors. When she went into her new apartment, we got her settled. One thing we didn't think of was to put a shower curtain on the shower. Do you know she just went in the shower and took a shower and the water went everywhere? For us, normal is, why didn't you have a shower curtain put up? You know what, you don't think of things. You just go and you do whatever you have to do to survive. And that's why we, I need you to please pray for our, our service members, pray for our veterans, take care of them, and take care of our country. We need to help the help, and all the help we can do, we have to do it together. Not one organization, not one person, not one group can do this alone. We've got to do it together and come together and unite. And my last words are, is God bless all of you, but especially God bless America. Thank you, Marianne. Our final speaker today is Bailey Morse. Bailey is a SUNY Brockport senior studying psychology and women and gender studies. Her research focuses on the negotiation of identity-based power negotiations and has taken her to Argentina and Antarctica. She has traveled across the East Coast to lecture on creating lasting social movements on college campuses. Bailey is president of the College at Brockport's Gender Equity Movement Organization, which works on the Brockport campus to create inclusive spaces and active advocacy for people of all identities, especially all genders. Please join me in welcoming Bailey Morse. Hi, everyone. Wow. It's cold. It's really cold. Okay. 364 days ago, I boarded an overnight bus to the District of Columbia to protest the inauguration of the 45th President of the United States. More than anything else, the clusters of traffic on the highway felt like a funeral procession for the country I thought I knew and had spent the last 19 years of my life loving. This year, a year later, we have again gathered to protest the injustices that have been perpetuated by the new administration. Rochester, New York gives us a few extra reasons to hold our hope. Since the 1800s, the Rochester area has been an epicenter for women's empowerment and activism for people of all identities. Just a few years ago, we had five female college presidents in the greater Rochester area. And for anyone who doesn't realize the gravity of that, that's not common. That's really kind of unheard of. Um, right now we have four and I'm lucky enough to attend college at SUNY Brockport where we have one of our own and uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and recently for the first time in the college's history we had women in both the student government president and vice president seats. Uh, given that information it probably doesn't come as a surprise to anyone that we have a relatively socially active student body. Uh, one of our campus organizations is today's co-sponsor for the event, Gender Equity Movement, and I'm very lucky to be able to stand before you as a two-year president of that organization. <laughs> um, so as the name suggests, we create programming and educational resources around the idea that all genders are equal on any degree of the gender spectrum. A lot of the work we do, though, is rooted in advocating against violence, including physical, emotional, um, as well as sexual violence. The Trump administration has rolled back several programs that protect survivors of this type of violence and oftentimes enables and legitimizes perpetrators as well as fails to advocate against this violence. In several statements, voices from the White House have extended support for perpetrators of violence such as President Trump's defense of Bill O'Reilly as well as denied support for survivors such as Betsy DeVos at her nomination hearing where she stated it would be premature to commit to maintaining the department's guidance aimed at combating sexual assault in schools. Governmental budget cuts have also been proposed that would affect the Department of Justice in ways that would impede on programs created by the Violence Against Women Act of 1994. Subsequently, this would deny survivors of violence access to the resources they need. Not only does this keep victims in dangerous situations, but it revokes access to care, safety, and assistance. Cutting this type of funding also adversely affects the transgender community, who are at significantly higher risk of violence. With our most recent statistics, 2017 was the most deadly year on record for the transgender community. 
One in 20,000 people are murdered in the U.S. every year, but the risk for members of the trans community sits at about every one in 2,600. In addition to that statistic, nearly half of transgender community members will be sexually assaulted in their lifetime. Trans women of color are even more likely to experience violence. Given that most hospitals, police departments, and coroners don't have guidelines for identifying transgender victims, the rate of violence is likely even higher than we know. This issue largely plays into the fact that recently in a meeting, CDC employees were told to avoid using the word transgender altogether, adding it to the growing list of words banned by the Trump administration and perpetuating their censorship of identity. Do you know what we're going to do about that? We're going to say it loud. But we will also recognize when our work is quiet. Every move we make, the vocabulary we choose, each piece of symbolism we put in place, all adds up to equal change in the world and nothing less. We will continue to educate ourselves and others as allies and advocates, as well as knowing the difference between the two. Someone who practices allyship stands next to and supports groups of people, but advocates continue to do so when they've left the room. And they don't ask for recognition because of it. In both cases, the important part is showing up with a book of identities, seeing who's at the table and who isn't, and then pulling up a seat for them. But this instructional guide is also contingent on the idea that you even have power to begin with. And depending on the context and the intersection of your identities, you may not. Continue to be an ally and an advocate, but remember that those terms can also mean standing up for yourself and inviting yourself into the conversation. Invite yourself to every rally, every caucus, occupy so much space that the room looks empty without you in it. We must stop asking for change because the nature of a question is that there are at least two answers. Here, in the revolution, there is only one. There is only justice. And we must demand it until we live in a country that protects all of its citizens, not just the ones that fit the mold. We will resist, persist, and we will raise our fists. Thank you. Fired from everyone who has um, taken the time to share their thoughts. I don't know. But um, please gather. And uh, so I would like to say something. So for any of those who aren't really big fans of Trump, and I think he really should turn around and be on our side. He, he should help the hurricane that happened to... Uh, um, he should have the he should help the hurricane that happened in Puerto Rico. He should help all of us. And even though I am not Christian, I do not believe in God. I still do believe in civil rights. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bailey. Um, that concludes our program for today. Um, I want to have a big round of applause for all of our fantastic speakers today. Thank you everyone for coming and another round of applause for our amazing interpreters, Dee Herrera and Angela Hauser. And for the um, Rochester Raging Grannies who will actually perform a little bit more after. Thank you again.
here to stay no matter what they say. In many places, homes and farms are being washed away. Glaciers melt and oceans rise, disasters every day. And the poor are the first to pay. Look out, cause we are growing older. We're gaining strength as we grow older. You can throw us into jail, but by our numbers we'll prevail. We are aging granny strong. Anyone can buy a gun, they're easy to obtain. Children get their hands on them, they think it's just a game. We've got to fight the NRA, they really are insane. We are aging granny strong. We need a president who's smart and capable and clear. Don't send out midnight tweets no more, we've had it up to here. Make us scream, we wish you'd disappear. We are aging granny strong. Look out, cause we are growing older. We're gaining strength as we grow older. You can throw us into jail, but by our numbers we'll prevail. We are raging granny strong. We'd just like to close with this song sing at the end of our monthly meetings um, and and yes, and those those potential grannies out there are very welcome to uh, to join us in those meetings and then up here so okay. if every woman in the world had her mindset